real life podcast. <laughs> it hurts, but then the painkillers kick in. Well, I'm not giving away my shit, so I have a salad. Walked it and then came back and just threw it in my mouth. And <laughs> was- I get physically and emotionally mad. I too love Pop Dead. <laughs> listener intro from matthew graham my favorite part of this podcast is liam and rick fair enough good intro i like the transition there's a from fish in my salad fish in my salad <laughs> that was that was a real life moment though to be fair that was on bltn oh bltn that was a bltn moment yeah yeah. Well, that's all that one big podcast i'd rather hear a funny intro than an intro of only real life clips yeah that makes sense you know what i'm saying shout out to matthew graham for that bad boy Thank thanks buddy Welcome in to uh, the Real Life Podcast. Everyone's here in one room, so we're back together again. Band is back together. It's been a while since we've done a pod with the exact five of us and no one else. No fill-in? Yeah, no fill-in or anything. It's like BTS having all of its original members. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no feuding, though. No feuding. Just just schedule overlaps. The work continues. The work well, we continues. were out in Jasper, obviously. If you mm-hmm. listen to this podcast, you know that. Shout out to our friends at Tourism Jasper, who did just an unbelievable job as well. If you haven't been out there yet this year, the escape card at Marmot Basin, that's your thing. Half price lift tickets, only $89 plus tax. Best deal in the Rockies. Or maybe you just want to go to the Fairmont JPL because you can't have a bad time there. Charles and I, well, we, we ticked both those boxes. Charles and I went skiing on Friday at Marmot. Yep. After a fresh evening or night of snow. So nice little snow day, little powder day at Marmot. That was great. It was great. It was really good. Like the powder. I don't know. It was thick. And I, my old legs, they just get beat down by the thick snow. I the dogs are barking. You got to be Mark Latesta and pack your mustard. Buddy, I got a real, real lesson today, which I knew was coming, but I wasn't sure when it would come. And that is I've always wanted to stay physically fit enough to do the things that I want with my children. <laughs> And so that's kind of my like drive to staying in shape. Uh-huh. And this weekend, my oldest son proved to me that he is getting faster and faster on skis. And it's starting. Oh, and it's start- wow. Shout out Logan. He is a hell of a skier. Holy it's, cow. It's pretty good. I had, so he's been skiing a couple times without me and I, we hadn't gone together for about a year now. And like, so the five, so so if, if if I was put to paint this picture, it's Jr. and my brother-in-law Jer, very good skiers, love to go fast, right? I also like to go fast, but I'm a little more cautious, just getting older. And my son Logan, I was unsure of if I was going to have to stay back or stay with him, and 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 let the, he was keeping up with Jay and Jr. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're doing this, yeah. And it was really he impressive. Skied the knob with us. He skied the knob chair with you us. Gotta go to the knob. The knob's he, open. You gotta ski it. It's it's funny because the the big snow doesn't like affect him. He can just like plow right through it. He picks great lines. Yeah. He, he like he's yeah. It's really impressive, and I now am feeling like. I'm a year away from him leaving me in the dust. Well, are you just hone, <laughs> I, your, hone your craft, buddy? No, I know. Yeah, operation, keep it tight. In effect. Operation, keep it tight. Well, yeah, that was a wake up call. Well, to be fair, I'm a little bit heavier these days. <laughs> it doesn't slow me down. No. I should probably go faster. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I also, I also bought shorter skis this year mm. because, so I, I got new skis, but I got them a little shorter. And so long skis, they're great for going fast. Mm-hmm. You get more surface area. You can go fast. Really? You can be mm-hmm. st- more stable. But short skis, and in my v- view, is my kids love to go through the trees. Yep. And so shorter skis are a whole lot easier in the trees. Yep. Well, they're kind of wanting to go fast now all of a sudden and not go through the trees as much. So I was like tucking and trying to, yeah, it was, but it was awesome. So we were skiing together. I get to the bottom. I was just, it was, it was a lot of fun one day. And then- like, you know, one day of skiing, you know, then you go into three straight, <laughs> right into a pond hockey, tournament. three straight pond hockey games. That was a number on the body. My whoop, just so you guys know my whoop bracelet, which tracks like heart rate monitor and everything for that okay. day said that in those three games, and we really didn't do much else. It was yeah. just like those three games, 3,600 calories. What? Wow. Yep. No, I don't believe that. Yep. Well, yeah. you got to remember you were skating out to the rink and then the action on and going back. Like, and forth. Like a lot like that is an obscene each, amount. Each game. And I don't really know how to take the strain into how many calories that is, but the strain was like 
would have been massive. Yeah, it was like the same as a normal like men's league hockey game. Like I don't know if you'd burn thirty six hundred calories running from Hinton to Jasper. And then, well, so you got to take it. It goes from midnight to midnight, right? And so that. The, so all the dancing at the, the cabin dancing, party, some yeah, of the okay. dancing, some of the dancing that's got, dance. got me off to a, than the hockey got, got me off to a really hot start between midnight and two 30 when I left the room party. Ish. So to be fair, Chalmers, I'm looking, I was wearing my Apple watch the yeah. whole time. Mine says I burned 2,900 calories. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. It kind of, I think, oh. I think it knows my weight. That I regret getting my side salad with my burger. I should just went all fries. The <laughs> funny off. thing though is, as I'm looking at my graph, there is a big spike around 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 1 a.m. Uh, we the, straight, the after we straight went epic. like, okay, so we finished like the hot stove. People are like trying to decide what the next move is. And JPL hooked these guys up with the gardener cabin. That looked like you were staying in a WWE wrestler's house. It was <laughs> It looked like you were very wealthy. It, it was, was five unreal. feet from the pond. It was a great HQ for all the content. And then it was a great... The TV to watch the game was that a well that was oh, in that the, was in the, that was in the room that was the that was in the ballroom oh shout out Jesus shout out JPL like they set up that that room for the hot stove and also for the viewing party yeah and it was like but I I, I know we've already kind of talked about this so people that are have listened throughout our weekend and know our thing but they know this already happened but they had a pool table down there we went back for like some pool little nation party. Maybe have a cocktail. Maybe have a cocktail. I invited a bunch of people. Then they show. Hour later, we go. I go upstairs. No idea this is even happening. And there is a full-on room party. It's a shaker. It's a shaker. Yeah. (laughs) And it turned into a dance party. I did a couple headstands. Oh boy! Uh, Of course. (laughs) Oh dear. (laughs) I was drumming with. That's like six hundred calories in of itself. (laughs) I know. That's that's the spread. So that really headstands that, that helped. And then I mean Saturday night we we had a thing. We were walking all around. The, the resort. So yeah. it's, it's yeah, no, yeah, maybe it, it adds up. You don't, you forget how much you're moving around, but yeah, no, that was, that's, I'm, that's gotta be one of my favorite weekends of the year. Like there is something special, like obviously like going to the JP, going to Jasper is special skiing in Jasper, but staying in the JPL, it's such a cool place to check out the pond hockey in the mountains, beautiful sunny day, like granted a little bit, a little bit chilly, but it would have been fine. A little windy, but like while we were playing, it was totally fine. And, uh, yeah, it's just, I don't think I've ever been anywhere where I heard this sentence. If you need anything, just let us know as many times yeah. as that weekend. If you need anything, let us know. I just walk through the lobby. And it's like, excuse me, sir. If you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> I'm like, a fair oh, amount of experience. That man. sounds good. All right. <laughs> okay. I yeah. think I also loved after we recorded that episode of real life post tourney. the tub party we had also was excellent. There was probably Standing five only liters of water tub. in that tub, and the rest was humanity. <laughs> yep. Sour Deans. It was the, great, and I wouldn't change it. Terry Harper, Harper was there. Like, what's that? Terry Harper was there. Terry Harper was there. Yeah, we played pawn hockey against a five-time Stanley Cup champion who turned 83 years old on Thursday. And he still played. <laughs> How old was he when he won the cup? So he played between <laughs> 63 and 81. Yeah. Uh, like, quite the career. Led the NHL in PIMS one year. Yeah. What's his name? Yeah. Terry Harper. Terry that's, Harper. Pro- that's probably the guy that knocked out, knocked uh, Jared down. Probably. In the spicy match. Yep. Yeah. It's still, the fire still burns. Mm-hmm. Flames Nation got into a spicy match every match they said they were in. Yeah, they were. Uh, yeah, well, they, they, but they're, they, they play very, a very assertive game. Like, we had a really heated uh, bout with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our boy Jared on. He did a. He did a headstand of his own. <laughs> yes, if there, did. if there was concussion protocol, Jared would have been in it. <laughs> yeah, he put himself in it actually. He yeah. right off the ice. He didn't like, play. Whoa. Chin doesn't look too bad. Oh, my chin. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. Eh? I forgot about her. Told I on. swear, I thought you were gonna have to get a zipper in there. I mean, you could have. Like, yeah, the, it was optional. Yeah. Crazy glue would have done. You'll have a trick. cool scar. You'll actually look like Tom Brady now, but without the surgery. Yeah. You just have a little, Here, just little dimple on, in the chin. I'll give you my yeah. Uggs to wear. There you go. Yeah, I'm fine. It's a little sore. Feels yeah. like a bruise. Well, yeah. you took a puck to the chin. Yeah, took, yeah. The audio is so good. Yeah. So good. if you haven't listened to the audio of Tyler taking a puck to the face, you have to go get you it. You were hot mic'd when you took it? Oh yeah. yeah, you didn't see that? No. I'm gonna go retweet it from the real life account right now. Yeah, I was, he was mic'd, mic'd, up, mic'd up. And you just hear like a little like dude, and then me going, oh. <laughs> and then oh, I no. turned to Chalmers and I'm like, did it get me good? And he's like, Yup. Oh <laughs> no, the blood on the thing I saw. Yeah. So the Saturday night watch party too was also very fun. 
Yeah, that room filled up. Well. Room filled up. Yeah, and it was a uh, beat down. Yeah, too. and it was a beat down, and like it was, we were cheering pretty loud in there, but like no cheer got a bigger cheer than when our boy Matt Berlin came in. What a story! <laughs> uh, was, so well, good. What a story. Everything that went into this, it it just everything needed to be perfect for a moment like that to happen. Yeah. I think part of it is you have to be on home ice because you want the home crowd behind them. You don't want to do it on the road where the crowd like might not react. Well, okay, wait, to if it. you're on the road, don't you get an e-bug from the road? Yeah, that yeah. too. So it's Matt Berlin <laughs> in his hometown getting a chance to do this. Number one, yeah. you need to be beating the ever loving hell out of the team you're playing. Yeah. Check. You need to have a coach and a room of guys who recognize this as possible. Cause I mean, it'd be very easy. Heed the moment you're winning all-star breaks coming up to just not even think about the guy sitting down at the end of the bench. So there's that. Then you also need a whistle late in the game. Cause they got that whistle at the two minute and 40 second mark, like in a blowout like that, where each team's just dumping it in either way for the most part. It's very easy to go the last Campbell, few minutes. That that rebound was one that Campbell very easily could have just like swatted to the game, corner yeah. and to keep the play to keep the, the mm-hmm. puck going because we had guys around there and he covered it up I, with full intention of getting that whistle. Now yep. Liam was briefing me on Matt Berlin and he's no David Ayers that Zamboni guy. Like yes. this guy is first of all an active athlete. Yep. Right. Golden and I, I feel like when they talked to him in the interview, they're kind of like, "Could you believe you're playing in the NHL?" And he was like, "Bitch, please." Uh, Liam said that. At one point, the scouts, I think it might have been the dub or who, but they were unsure yeah. who to draft, whether it's Skinner or Berlin. So, like, he's a high level player. And it's crazy to think that they were that close in skill. And now Skinner's in the all star game. And this guy's like, no, no well, shame in playing yeah. for the U of A. No, 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 no. But Skinner, you can say he's an he, NHL. He's an NHLer. Skinner being so, in the all star game is remarkable. So, we, we know a few things about Matt Berlin. Number one, he goes to the U of A, he is an active goalie for the yeah. U of A Golden Bears. At a where level. was where was he ended up draft being drafted? Was he drafted? He was never NHL drafted. He was this never is, NHL yeah, drafted. Adam draft this. Oh, okay, because they both he was him and Skinner were the, uh, playing the same team. The so South yes, side, that yes. South Side team yeah. that's got Hamlin. Anyone else? They are. We're getting a workout of that. Hamlin, picture, Benson, hey? Benson, Berlin, and Skinner. But then think about Derek Ryan, who played for the Golden Bears in 07. That's like, crazy. What the fuck? So by that math, you can see Berlin as late as twenty thirty four. In the NHL. Just so, to, like, sorry, as an aside, also, we got a fucking scrap from Kulak that night. Yeah. Like, oh, a I love it. He Great wanted fight. it. Yeah. He wanted it. That was one of the best fights I've seen in a minute. Was there a backstory there? That was a good tilt. Between those two? Uh, I rewatched it on Hockey Fights this morning. It just seemed like Kulak didn't appreciate the hit. Yeah. Leading yeah. up to the fight. And then they just, they threw him. They chucked him. They chucked him. And they didn't do what I'm seeing a lot of for, for bit fires where they just try to go down. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, no, they were, no, they were the swinging. Show, these yeah. two wanted to fight. Is Kulak there. the poor man's uh, Chris Russell? Is he kind of a similar hard Is scrabble? Is players? Kulak and Russell? Yeah. Kulak's like a good skating defenseman. I think, yeah, like they're both, they both skated well, both defense first. Kulak's just better at Kulak everything. Kulak can move the puck. He's better at everything. Kulak can move the puck better. Kulak's a better skater. Does he block pucks like my boy Russell? Though? No, oh, okay. but like he Blocked doesn't need to because he's put himself in those spots. One more question about um, Berlin. Uh, after the game, the question was posed to both um, McDavid and Woodcroft, basically to address like that. They both went out of their way to, to address there was no disrespect. 100%. Now, was there people from Calgary, like was, was there people saying this was disrespectful? I think people are looking for trouble. Yeah. That, so, so there's always that crowd yeah. on, in, on social media. that's going to say they shouldn't have done this, whatever, but did like anybody from like the Chicago Blackhawks organization, did yeah. anybody? No. So Spectre, no, 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 no. it was Spectre, all predetermined. Yeah. Spectre tweeted out, asked an NHL or asked a Blackhawks executive, whether he felt disrespected by Edmund and given Berlin a try, or if he'd heard of anyone who had, he said no and no. And then we still started freaking out. What was funny was Terry Jones tweeting that they should have called on Shannon Sabados. Like she just had a kid. This yep. is the thing. He's like, virtue, he's like virtue she signaling live here now. Like, why wouldn't they there call on her? Though. And we everyone was like, shut up, Terry. And then the, the next minute she's on Instagram announcing she was having a kid. That was pretty funny. Yeah, but that, was, that reminds <laughs> me of when he got Sabados for backup trend in Canada wide. That was awesome. That was just for practice. She wasn't in town though, right? Either. No, no, she yeah. wasn't in town. That was for practice, he said? That was practice. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, I couldn't believe that when I saw that tweet. I was like, "How are you, uh, are you talking about?" What's what's his what's his motive? Terrence, to become relevant yeah. for a minute. Like you can't let the team have this one, but it was really cool. And also, I know he said he was adjusting a strap on his helmet, but I will take it as he makes a save and then has the presence of mind to go hand to the ear for the crowd because that's what it looked like. Um, just all of it was awesome. He gave a great interview. After great interview. Well. And now you think about all this too. Like when you are in that spot. You get 500 bucks and you keep your jersey. That's in the CBA. But now he gets reverse the reverse retro, gets the reverse retro, sick. Also gets the hockey net in Canada towels. Oh, yeah. Sick. That's huge. Sick. That's Le- the real. And his career isn't oh, over. Gosh. It's not like he's a make a wish guy who made it to the NHL. Like he could still play. You never know. I thought it was funny. You wanted to have him on your show, but it's just like, nah, man, school. Yeah, I texted the U of A and I was like, hey, can I uh, get an interview with Berlin today? And How like, do you yeah. text the U of A? Well, the guy who How does that the work? media there. On the text line. You just yeah. text U of A? You just like text at just... U of A. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they were like, I use an exam at 10 a.m. He can't. And I was like, ah, makes sense. He was studying when he was told that he was going to be backing up. Pretty and cool. the heart must have been pumping, hey? Oh. oh. I would just submit my photo of myself in Oilers gear in lieu of my exam yeah. and demand an A. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was busy. But the shot of him, because like we were watching in at, out in Jasper, obviously, and when they showed the shot of him in the tunnel with his helmet on, the awesome. warm up, what's going through his head there, first of all? When he you're seems like, like a cool cat. Yeah. And then also, shout out to Jay Woodcroft, who when he told him he was going in, treated it like a serious oh, goalie pull he, like that stri- head nod <laughs> straight face pointing the thumb you're going in like yeah can you imagine your brother me like fuck oh my god <laughs> this feels so serious we're doing it we're doing it and then like jack campbell too like the big smile and all of that oh, and yeah. it's just I such am, good I moments am, man good I moments i'm glad he took that he got a shot on oh, yeah. so when go, you shut out going in and not getting that shot on net would have been just like yeah. and then they said to him what do you think you're saving he's like it was going wide like Come on. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. <laughs> when wow. you go to NHL.com. Save the game, actually, if you ask me. Yeah. Yep. He's the <laughs> highest. He's the only other goalie to never let in a goal. Yeah. So when you go to NHL.com <laughs> and you go all time. Yeah. History of the league since they started counting save percentage. And you sort by save percentage. He's at the top because his last name starts with a B. Hey. <laughs> so, Unbelievable. Hey. History. He is the NHL. All, he's in that number one spot Berlin. for save percentage. But you could Broker. tell he's a competitor. He didn't want to be like a trivia answer. Like you could tell he's like, I'm a good goalie. Yep. He good wanted to you. He wanted to make all the scouts that were questioning his blocker rethink their. Yeah. I laughed at the guy who said. High blocker was the high blockers yeah. this was his weakness. He's going to prove him wrong. In the, in the NHL proved him wrong. <laughs> yeah. I like the guy in the comments on Insta who said, that's how they call him the Great Wall of China. <laughs> oh, <God. Right? laughs> ignoring the low hanging fruit no. key to comedy he now sits 12th all time for I'm assuming he never gets another game in the NHL because again he's at the U of A and they spit out NHLers they've as recently as a year ago spit out an active NHL goalie in Zach Sachenko. Um, but he is 12th for shortest NHL career by a goalie Wow. Do you want to take a stab at Ooh. how long you think the shortest ever career? Less than. Goalie? So what do we do? 240? He was 226. And he's 12th? 12th. <laughs> there are 11 <laughs> other goalies wow. who have been shorter. Three than seconds. Him. Eight. 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 Jorge Alves. Can you imagine training your entire life for eight solid seconds? How, of how does NHL that even hockey? happen? A lot can happen in eight seconds. He That's played a December 31st game. For the Canes, December 31st, 2016, for the Canes against the Lightning. It was like an e-bug. Is he actually... I don't know the story. Where's David Ayers ranking? Well, David he Ayers got like a year like and a half, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he like, played quite a while. I mean... And won. Yeah. Starting to your goalie, own starting goalie was like, I'd like to get started on my New Year's plans eight seconds early. Yeah. So can you get me out of here or what? Yeah, I have no idea. That's <laughs> what weird. What the hell? Maybe it was a similar situation and we just didn't talk about it as much. Next, actually, Carolina. maybe Boo. I kind of remember that. Or hey, Alves, hmm. is he actually a goalie? I don't know. He won a contest at Well, remember there was remember NHL Cool yeah. Shots. One of the co-hosts got to play a shift for the Minnesota Wild. That doesn't seem appropriate. And he was not a good hockey player. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Remember when Manute Ball played hockey and he was sitting on the end of the bench? So Alves, for according who? to Steve, for like an IHL team, right? But like that's weird. It was really weird. Alves was a uh, the same situation, actually, I believe, according to uh, Stephen Wino from the Associated Press, who I hung out with him last year when we were at the draft. And at the time, he was writing a book, and you can get it now, 
Odd Man In. He wrote a book about hockey's emergency goalies, called it the wildest one day job in sports. It's a book you can go buy. So Berlin will. If he just you know, waited yeah. one year longer. Could have told the Maddie Berlin. So the him. thing with this is too, and this is just a weird hockey nerd thing to bring up, but he could, if he was a true e-bug in that game, cause he wasn't an e-bug. Mm. No. So if it was a situation he where wasn't in the skin, stands, he started the game on the bench. Yeah. yeah. So if it was a situation where he started in the stands and they had to throw him on the bench because Skinner or Campbell got hurt, the Oilers wouldn't have been allowed to by rule do that. Yep. You can only do it if you start the game on the bench and have signed your amateur tryout to then sit on. Man, the that's what that's like you saying that this was like the perfect storm. Yeah. That wasn't even one of the things, and that might be the most important well, one. Yeah, because you literally would not have been allowed to do it. Yeah, yeah going back to the cool shots guy being allowed to play for the wild <laughs> doesn't seem right to me. It's like to being in Catch a Predator. They're like, you get to be in death row now. Like, I don't think what? you should be allowed to cross the fourth <laughs> column or whatever it's uh, called. <laughs> well, there, there, sh- I think it was the first year of the wild. Too. Was it preseason at least? Or is it like, oh, man, oh, I, well, there's I, no I, way I, they could have put him on the roster. I want to say it was a regular season game. I really do. Now, was it a, it was obviously a former NHL player. But no, what? No, it's just a guy. No, it wasn't that I good. Can't see this being true. The wilder, like, we need the promotion. Yeah, you pull up. I'm trying to find it. I googled we need the cool shots player. plays for wild. Is that what I should be googling? Yeah, cool, shots, cool shots. Wow, plays one game for the wild or one shift. Or what just other remember sport? on cool shots, Brett Lindros, like he was fishing? on the bench. I don't the whole even game, remember I cool believe. shots. I really honestly don't you know. Remember what? Brett Lindros well, was the co host? Yeah, no. yeah, I, yeah. Was, so was the other guy. Was with the it goat good? Team. Yeah, it was a good show. I used to love it when I was a kid. I remember him going fishing with somebody and like caught a big fish and like he flexed his arm to pull the fish out. I swear to God, I thought his shirt was going to shred. He was a unit. Boy, he's a big boy. Is there nothing there? I swear this happened. This is a childhood dream. Kurt Russell? Was he the star? No, definitely not. Kurt Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell escaped from LA. Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn's son is the the only one listed. Did you know that? Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn's son played like BCJHL as a goalie. I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, Rod Stewart's son played in the WHL. Rod Stewart and Rachel Hunter's son. Really? That kid's probably got it all. Who was the co-host of this show? That's what I need to figure out. He had a goatee, I think. Pelle Lindbergh. No. No. No, Definitely not. (laughs) not. What was the guy you partied with? The 85-year-old guy? That's a co-host. Terry Terry Harper. Harper. Terry Harper. Guy's body probably hurts less than mine does today. (sighs) Old Terry Harper. All IMDb says is Kurt Russell. And Why Lee are you Anderson looking at IMDb yeah, that's for a this? Weird this place is not the place. Where the fuck am I going to look? Ask Jeeves. IMDb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for cool shots. Cool shots cast. Well, it's there. Oh, my God. Just go go, go NHL cool. cool shots. Who are the co hosts of cool then you'll shots? Get, yes. Yes. Let's start the investigation at the beginning. Oh it doesn't God. have a Wikipedia. What? You, you, your one thing it did, it was on the bot, right? It said NHL cool shots. No, that's a link to the fucking IMDb. This episode should be called Let's Five Guys, One Go Google. of yeah. the DB. That's not Wikipedia. This uh, happened, folks. I, I can assure you. One thing I can't guarantee if it was regular season or if it was preseason. But like Marion Gabrick was in it. Okay. He well. went out and played a shift. It was basically, it was, it was NHL's Rudy. The more time passes, the other one like this that's shocking is Manon Rion playing in 1993 for the Lightning. Yeah. That was a long motherfucking time ago. She's aged impossibly well, too. Have you seen? Yeah, she does. Her? She has TV. Unbelievable. Yeah. She hasn't aged a day. Nope. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Back my weird able to find it. Did you look? I can't find much about NHL cool shots at all. Because you got yeah. that OnlyFans. Was shots up with over a Z there. or something then? Like, what do we. No, no, shots with a Z. It was cool. They hadn't flipped into the streets yet. It was too soon. Like, why it, is it, it so aired hard to from find? 97 to 2004? You're, looking for oh, you're, just reading, you're just reading the goddamn IMDb. It's too young. It's too old for what you're looking for, Jay. It's like trying Google? to find a bit of news from 1923. I was actually surprised to learn that I went until 2004. Yeah. They got to bring it back, man. Cool shots. Was I the just keep best. getting recipes for like sex on the beach okay. and fruit loop shots. I'm, oh, I'm working on it, God. folks. Cool shots for a party. God, I'm sorry trying. to derail it here, but yeah, I'm not doing very good. Not even gonna try. I just keep seeing all these ads for Russian brides. I'm going to get this guy on our show. What's his name? Kurt Russell. Dan Moriarty. There it is. That's oh. Dan Moriarty. Yeah. Dan Moriarty yeah. played that guy was a, a game up in the reporter. NHL. Yeah. yeah. Dan Moriarty. Yeah. Where is him. your Where is your legacy, Minnesota Wild? Yeah, 346 followers. It was a big deal in my life. <laughs> okay, so he does not have a credited NHL game on his elite prospects. 
But he's on a assuming a, no wait. This can't be the right Dan Moriarty. This guy would be thirty five. No, that's impossible. So there's a different Dan Moriarty somewhere. Speaking of followers, I noticed I lost one. Oh yeah, why? I don't know, Jay. Why did you unfollow me on Twitter? What? Mm. Wow. So wow. there's oh, legit though. A- Twitter does unfollow people. No. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, that was not intentional. Well, we'll see. Mm, like- How'd you know? Because last night I was writing my recap article uh-huh. for the Jasper Pond Hockey Tournament. Read it over there, nation.com. And I was just looking at what everybody was posting on socials. Like, follow back. Take some- <laughs> <laughs> that shit happens though. Uh huh. Well, you just gave one back. <laughs> yep. Every night before you go be to bed, before shamed, you close your eyes, you go, wait, does Jay still follow Listen, me on one Twitter? Of those where you looked at uh, an account that you knew you both followed and then all of a sudden it said followed by. No, because I was looking at Jay's Twitter just to see if he had posted any photos that I could rip in for the article. And it just says, um, Normally it says follows you back. Wow. Oh, or follows you. Oh. oh, okay. Fine. I've got cut from the list. Sending a quiet message. It's because f- I was, uh, my favorite on Twitter is when people have the software that says you got unfollowed, then they call the people out for unfollowing <laughs> them. Yeah. Some of the best tweets out there. You can follow me. I don't know if there's there. any video evidence of this. What other sport has anything even close. Yeah. If like somebody, let's say we're at a Jays game. What's the likelihood of me coming in to pitch the ninth? You know, or they're like, go play left field. And you're like scared. Have you football. run out of players? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it's crazy. I think I what happened think in the a 40- position, a position player pitching in the, in the MLB is probably the closest thing you can have to somebody who she has no business being at that position. I mean, yeah. Berlin Before e bugs, I used to just he, make an announcement. Can yeah, people Berlin play? Berlin has business being at that position, mm-hmm. but you like it's amazing. In to no me. other sport will you get like this unique situation because the position of goalie in hockey is just so hard to replicate, right? Like again, in an NFL game, if two kickers go down, you have no kickers. Like we've seen it, where it's like, okay, like we got this guy on the roster. He says he kicked in high school. Like he can just do it. But it would and it's be like, whatever. Yeah. But and like it, the different gear, all of that just makes it wild. What about yeah. like the Broncos when, uh, because of COVID protocol, none of oh, the QBs that address that wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened with San Francisco yesterday? They run out of quarterbacks or something? No, yeah. they had, they had Josh Johnson behind them. And, and then he got a concussion. Brock. Oh, pretty got hurt. In like the first the end of the first quarter, I think, or beginning of the second, oh, just no. got, guy got his elbow hit from behind and it and just went so down. Purdy got hurt on his second throw. Josh Johnson came in, got a concussion. So going into the second half, they had to throw Purdy back in, but he only completed two more passes for four yards in the second half of the game. It off. They were hand. They ran every play. And at one point oh, they so were they like were that game where they were doomed. Yeah, they were, oh, doomed. they were doomed. There was a point where they were like, Oh, why aren't you just going to McCaffrey and the wildcat? And just yeah. running McCaffrey in the Wildcat or rotating McCaffrey and Debo in the Wildcat. Because, yeah. like, Purdy was clear. Purdy could not throw. Bag milk, you know what my favorite football highlight was of this weekend? Mm-hmm. The drones that did the gritty in Philly. That was that? so cool. <laughs> the it's drone like, show oh, did God, the gritty. Okay. Yeah, one, you oh, sent me a video. What an of age to be alive. Drone show where somebody, a player, like, a, up in the sky doing the gritty. Then it went into the Eagles logo. Man, fireworks are done. Suck, They're done. Fireworks this are over. way better than uh, fireworks. They're They're done. Done. It's a Philly thing they spelled out. You just program them and they just go up there and keep them for next awesome. year. Awesome. That's how they did fire. I saw a fireworks show like that in new year's Eve. Like I wasn't there. I saw it online, but in like Dubai, they did that. Yeah. You want to, you want to advertise some shit, Jay, you go buy 20 drones. There's nothing preventing you from doing it. Better for the environment. You don't need a permit like a fireworks. These well, ones run on diesel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Panda bones. <laughs> <laughs> Got to grind them up fine. <laughs> Add a little water. Yeah, so football this weekend. I don't know. That's crazy that in the conference final, you can have a team that is so ill-equipped at one, at, this, at the most important position on the field. Yeah, it would Like, be, it's insane. Yeah, it'd be like if an NHL team went to the conference finals and Matt Berlin had to like play half the game. Like when juicy marketing had to come play in Oh six, he was the third string goalie. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. I still don't forget Screw Ty Conklin. Ty. They said, Screw get Ty on Conklin. my back team. We're going to the game. Well, Ty costs like Ty Conklin got that game one. That, get him out of the way. Everyone's like, well, if Rollison, if we, if Rollison played the whole series, we won. Yeah. If Mark yes. Bergeron was never yes. born, we'd have a Stanley cup. Okay. Yes. But if Conklin doesn't Conklin there. Yep. Yeah. We also probably win the Stanley Cup. Butterfly too. effect, though, we wouldn't get McDavid. Would you trade oh, McDavid? So would you trade no. McDavid's career for an 06 no, Cup? No, no, no. Neither no. do I. Provided, no. ask me in five years. He'll yeah. win a cup. No. If we, if we don't win a cup with McDavid, no. 
We've had way more nights because of Connor than that yeah. one game. It's a, hey, the comic David era is amazing, but like we owe it to Connor David to give him what he needs to win a like that goddamn cup. I don't trade that. I I mean, granted I was young. So like you guys are a better demographic. Yeah, like I was 21. Are, are, are we at all worried that uh, Clem's kind of slowing down a bit? No, what? The <sighs> He's not. Uh, remember, like, he you can expect goals. him to shoot twenty four percent. It was the impact he was having in and out of the room. You know, the you expect they him just to be on room. fire. Oh, the only thing I've seen him do in the last off. week is tell a Calgary Flames fan he can't. Yeah, that was pretty on awesome. air. Anyone ice fishing? That's pretty awesome. Tell that who drilled the hole? Sound. Yeah, and who drilled the hole? I just want to know. Connor, Jesus, Connor, almost called you Connor Chalmers. He's a third line winger. Yep. He's going to go on runs where he scores four goals in five games. He's going to go on runs where he doesn't score in five or six games. And it'll balance out to him being a 15, 16 goal guy. Let me just tell you, I think he's going to feel better after the all-star break. Yeah. Chalmers, Ooh. you can't play the e-bug every night. Ooh. Okay. No, you can't. You can't. Just, Not every I night. Was, I was really hoping that he would like, that he wouldn't just be a third line guy doing that. Maybe because he, he drilled be his own whole ice in. fishing. His arms are a little sore. Yeah, he was tired. And he can't do the thing. He didn't have the drill either. He just used a fork. Just so, punch the ice. Yeah. There's one thing I know about athletes. They might not be the handiest of fellas. You give one of them a motorized hole auger. That's and dangerous. That would be, well, it depends where they're would from. Be, okay. You might Clem Costin himself. I bet you any, any NHLer that's from rural Saskatchewan or rural Northern Alberta knows how to operate an ice auger. I think with a name like Clem Costin and an accent like Clem Costin's, he's from Northern Alberta. It's in mm-hmm. their contract. No skiing. No snowmobiling, none of this stuff in season. Chainsaw they, juggling? One accident away from no ho- drilling your own fish hole. Yeah, so they didn't do it. That's what I'm saying. Somebody should have been there. Good. I'm glad no they did. No augering, it says in his contract? Yeah, line 4A. No augering. Yep. No augering. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have ice fished in Jasper. Do you think there's, is there fish in Maline Lake? Maline Lake, yeah. Maline Lake? Yeah, there has to be. Up the hill. Yeah, there's. Giant jumbo rainbow trout up there. You can't are you, are, right? You're not allowed to do it in the, in the uh, national park, are you? Yeah, you can fish there. Oh, you can? Yeah, you can fish really? there. So you can fish Moline, you can fish Pyramid and Patricia Lake. Trout, trout, trout. Really? Yeah. And then there's probably fish. I think that's the Athabasca River that goes through there. There's probably fish in there. You know where else you can fish? Milf Island. Mm. Oh my God. What are a show. Guys, are you guys keeping up with it? I'm doing segments on my podcast every week to recap the episodes. Is it as, is it as, okay. We know the premise now, but is it as good as you thought or as cringy as you thought, or it's, is it getting it's way different than you thought? The worst piece of shit I've ever seen. Okay. And that's what makes it great. Reality TV is changing. Like before it was like, we're going to have a bunch of random people who have to live with each other and just sort of see what happens. And now it's like, I feel like it's edited in such a way that it's just like constant drama, constant That's like this. viral moments. That's what this show so is. It's drama, not like, it's so, not, all, it's not organic. It's no. all. So there's three, planned. there's three obvious pieces of drama that you can have. That is a You're, mom and a son fighting over the decisions they're making. Yes. A mom and a mom. Yes. Fighting over a decision about a son yes. and son or son and son. So which one's happening the most? All three. All three. Okay. All three. But so they don't far. feel real to me when I'm watching it. I yeah. don't believe it's happening. What if a son comes to realization that his mom is the hottest? Oh God. That's called the, there's Oedipus. been some, um, reveals through the first episode, three episodes that are just absolutely gross. They all have to kiss each other blindfold genres. Okay. Really? A lot of people kiss their own moms. No. Yeah. The kissomatic. Like, no, really? Yeah. Like they had a thing where they, they also had the, they were all blindfolded. They were all blindfolded and they were rubbing the guy's chests and bodies and stuff. And they had to try and figure out which one was their own kid. Oh my God. What? No. Who would sign up for this? And they did this one called banana hammock. I don't even want to tell you. I don't want to hear about that. (laughs) Oh my God. That's insanity. (laughs) And like, hey, where do you real. get this Outside show? Outside of banana hammock, everything you just said is true. <laughs> the kissing's not real. The kissing well, the wasn't real. But the touching oh. the back is real. The touching the back was real. They also played another game where they had to put like um, a secret you've never revealed to anyone up on a board and you had to pick which one was your mom, which one was the kid. Oh my God. Absolutely horrendous. It was the bird box <laughs> round, Chalmers. They all put on blindfolds. They got in a canoe and kissed their own mom. This is such a bad idea. <laughs> it's the greatest idea. It's such a disaster. I love it. Oh my God. Bird box. <laughs> Well, that was oh, there's no play till February 7th, so we got to talk about something. Like, what are we gonna well, then do? go. We do not need it. Oilers games for an Oilers, Oilers podcast, Oilers Nation every day. What's it doing for the next three weeks? I don't know. 
Bird box rounds. Oh, I'm going to the All-Star game. <laughs> and while well, I'm assuming the show goes on. Yep. While I'm there, I'll just be doing it from off Florida. You got to try to reel, uh, pull the all the, on the bench boys on, on your show. Or yeah, Nick Alberga or who else is there? Frank? Yeah, Frank's it was a full weekend hang got, with I my gotta boys. Ask, did the they bar. break character the entire time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 oh, this, time, this time more than last the time. The helmet came off and they just were yep. dudes. The one, the one guy, Jacob, is like, that's just who that's he is. That's just who he is. That's just who he is. He's yeah. just always on. Ollie's like in and out. Like he just kind of, like, he just goes quiet for a bit. Like, and just kind of chills. Me and him had some great chats just because he was not in character. We were just having yeah, a cocktail. Yeah, he, and you, we were you just both yeah, like for that, like, so for Saturday night for the game watching, like the, the watch party, he, they came in not dressed like them. They just, oh. they just came in two dudes, just hanging out with a bunch of people. There's just two guys hockey. wearing hockey equipment yeah. in the bar. Yeah. And yeah. They, they like, they, they're really good because my son, Luke is very engaging with people and they, your boy was they, interviewing everyone in the room. I know. Basically the hot stove. His mom and the, fin- the, hot stove man, eh? the hot stove finished, which was uh, Frank Saravalli, Boomer, Pinder from Barn Burner, from the Oz Nation. Yeah, yeah. Or Flames from Flames Nation. Nation. And then the on the bench guys. Yeah. Right? So they're sitting up in the front. They quit their thing. And my son is immediately up there. And I like, you know, I'm having drinks. I'm having a good time. And I look up and like 20 minutes later, like he's still sitting there interviewing. Like and they're Frank, still talking to him. The, cool. And they buddy and the, on the bench guys were great awesome. with them. Like they're just, they're just good dudes, man. They, when they came to like they the party, our game against Flames. Yeah, it would almost be if they walked into like just our Oilers nation, like the Oilers nation party and they were like maximum them you'd probably be like okay boys just like calm down we're gonna just turn it down but like i thought they they were never out of character before last year they weren't out of character this much but i feel like part of it might be like it's their second time hanging out with us and it's like okay we know we can like because like when tyler got hit in the face with the puck those boys were the first ones to jump in and try and help yeah they the one guy was like i'm skating back i'm gonna go find you band-aids i'm gonna get you a first aid kit the other guy was like an incident yeah he was leaking it was all down the front of his I saw that photo. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big to-do. Thuggin. Big to-do. Well, yeah. it just needed a towel, right? Like, so, and and one of the girls, I think Kennedy was even the one that said, I'll go get it. And the boys are like, no, no, no. We're we can do skates. it faster on skates. And then they just like ripped. It just went and got it. And um, yeah, Liam it, says, if you listen to our last episode of Real Life, because remember, we recorded the first 20 minutes before the game. And then after he says it, I, my voice, like I talk different. On the second one, because I was because you're holding something to your chin the whole time. Oh yeah, is, ice. Yeah. Oh, whatever. That was good. It was a good mm-hmm. concept to break it up like we did. Yeah, it was. That was funny. I thought that was really good. All right, uh, we got to give some love to our friends at Montana's. Mm-hmm. I'm so we, jealous. I didn't get to go for lunch. I know. We're gonna have a post up on the Twitter and at our Twitter and our uh, Instagram, OilersNation.com and OilersNation on Twitter. Um, we're giving away twenty five dollars GC to Montana's. Mm-hmm. There are instructions. It'll be on the post. Just got to go find the post, follow the instructions. You're in the draw. You could win 25 bucks to Montana's. We had somebody hit us up on the nation Twitter saying, thanks for reintroducing Montana's into my life, boys. Montana's is delicious. If you haven't been tonight. to Montana's, go to Montana's. The wings are crush, so good. Crush some ribs. I want or to go off the grid mm-hmm. and get the hot chicken sandwich. I was a Tony Romans fan. We call ourselves Tony Romans. Mm-hmm. I like Montana's better now. I had Tony Romans the other day. It wasn't as good as Montana's. Montana's is much deliciouser. All right. I saw a Tony Romo's the other day. And Tony Romo's? Tony Romo's. And like the A and the S were burnt out. And I was like, I wonder how they're doing. <laughs> Can't be doing great. The one on the south side, they just knocked it down. It wasn't replaced. Remember the one in Bourbon anything? Street used to be packed. packed. The, Tony, the, the patio at Tony Roma's packed. used to be like the place to be on a Saturday. Next what? to just the packed to sit old spaghetti factory. The only busy old spaghetti factory in the universe is on Bourbon Street. There was two places when I was a kid. You know, on my birthday, I got to pick where the family went for dinner on my birthday. Olive right? Garden. So for like mm. whatever run from when I was like eight until 16, it was either Tony Roma's or it was this place called Bonanza, which was a buffet. Oh, Bonanza oh, rules. Even yeah. tell me. Yeah, do not tell us about Bonanza. Bonanza. So Tony then, Roma's would give you a free meal on your birthday. Yeah. That's why I, like I did that too. We yeah. used to go because you'd get like this thing in the mail like two weeks before and it would be a certificate that said, this is your free birthday dinner. I thought there were Tony Roma's like around the world. I think it's just a Western Canada slash Edmonton thing. I don't think there's a lot of them at all. We've talked about Bonanza on here before. Bonanza is a concept that needs to come back. The ice cream bar. 100%. Oh, the ice cream bar. The taco bar. Like, come on. Everything. What country is this place? All of them. 
Yeah, and the carving station, all of it was so good. And I will never forget waking up on Boxing Day and my sister had the newspaper and was like, Bonanza burnt down. And it was just crushing. It was soul crushing. <laughs> yeah, and they never like, you must have been young because I yeah. I was young when Bonanza burned down. Yeah, yeah, but they resurrected in the north side for a little bit. That's when you yeah, went that's to? That's the one I'm talking yeah. about is the north side. Yeah, it resurrected. resurrected briefly. Okay, because the West End one then didn't burn down. It closed or something. It was the Wendy's, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah, the it Wendy's was right that there. turned into a Wendy's? Really? Yeah. Oh, the Where? Stan- in Terralosa. That, that, that was, that was a, a standalone building. Was I want to say that was a Bonanza. No, it was. I can't believe that small mills and Dollar Tree now. That's yeah, depressing. That's, a, that's so like, depressing. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. doesn't even. I drove past that the other day for the first time in a while. I was like, "What the hell? How do you even convert that?" Yeah, it is. It is interesting when you drive by something like that. Like I drove. I was going out to Ladue. Oh no, this one when we were going to Vegas, and I was driving out to the airport, and A and B Sound is just like a random collection of office buildings. Yep. I used to buy so many records in there. And I've heard though in that Dollar Tree, they kept the lighting the same as the sawmill. So it's just dark. Are there VLTs in the Dollar Tree? Is still there? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of spins when you're in there? Yeah. Uh, And if you you ask the right question, you can get a prime rib. AB Sound was a a really interesting place because it was always Uh, busy. It was so big. Yeah. And for some reason, everything. When you're talking about like a CD or a tape for like $11.99 or $19.99, Somehow, AMB Sound was like always two dollars cheaper. Maybe yep. that was the mistake. And, and it was, and that, and people would go a, there. There was the flaw right there. Yeah, AMB a- a- yeah. a- 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 Sound just like all of a sudden took the city by storm. Yeah, yeah. There was the In south side locations. downtown. It yeah. was over. The other I, thing. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say I have something else along the lines of this, but I want to let you go. It boggles my mind. Red Robin closed. I know it was always busy. The West End one was always busy. The downtown one was always busy. I, I by it. They not only closed it, they demolished the building. That was the end of her. The West End, it's just like the scars remind us that the past is real. How does this happen, though? Like, it was always <laughs> yeah. busy, man. They, they took down the sign, and it's just like yeah. still, it's like the you sun the has died the whole building, except for where that is. If so you went in there, says- flipped the D to Reb Robin, and offered bottomless fries, I swear to God, you'd be busy. I cannot fathom why. Tower onion rings and a freckled lemonade sounds delicious. Oh, and, I, and their oh. buzzard sauce. Mm. Why did it close? I Grand truck, do you know? No. I think, I think corporate. I feel though there's a they're red still open in B- on they're still open in BC. Vancouver. Yeah, they're open in BC for sure. Road trip. No, the delicious okay. fries they had they were so good. Their burgers were so good. Yeah, there was this one time there. I went before an Oilers game to the one downtown, and I had a couple hey. freck. What? Who's here? Coombsy's back. Oh, Coombs back after oh, the the nine- six leg Brazilian Coom trip of doom back home. Yeah, I have something else along the lines of things that are closing. But first, we're gonna uh, quickly pause for an ad. For somebody who isn't closing. The mind bender's being taken down. Oh, Oh, 37 years. Too late. I used to love the mind bender. It's, you know, it's, it was small, but it was mighty. Are they replacing it with something equally I was just going to say, my first two questions are, are they replacing it with another roller coaster? And if not, that is a lot of space where they can put all this new shit. So I read the release. water park. I, I read the release from West Edmonton Mall. It sounds like they're going to do those immersive, like a big immersive thing where you're wearing the goggles and shit and you're like in the zone. It's an IVF clinic. Space. It's where people go and then you can all watch and they shoot it out of a cannon. In Hasbro land? <laughs> like VR? Yeah, some kind of like a VR play. For it. They just said, I'll read it to you. It's, it's Mr. Like Potato immersive They need more water massage capsules. Those are the shit. They should fill that area with just a hundred water massage capsules. And everyone's in there just getting there. I love a good water massage. Have you ever been in that thing? The ones in the middle of the mall. How weird would the water park? Right right by by the water park. park. Yeah. But they're busy as hell. Did you ever get one? I think I got one. I got one once. Like a long time ago. Like this is. It felt like I was inside a condom inside a car wash. (laughs) So weird. It was very weird. It was kind of like a tanning booth, but not didn't feel like it. And they're like, you're going to like this. I did not like this. The iconic Mindbender has been the park's premier thrill ride since the grand opening in 1985. Except for one terrible afternoon Eh. and the forgetting (laughs) about a period. (laughs) While the Mindbender will be missed, we are excited to announce that we are working on groundbreaking new plans for family thrills that will immerse our guests in and out of this world experience. They don't call it the Mindbender, though, do they? Because they called it the triple loop roller coaster after because they thought it sounded ghoulish. Oh, it, was, mind it was always still. the mind bender mm-hmm. I, from Lori Bethel before, triple it? loop roller coaster for a while. I guarantee he's you. the vice president of parks and attractions. Until we all forgot. Shout out to them. So you'll, uh, 
you can watch this on the WEM socials if you'd like to. Fantasyland has changed now. It's like board game land. It's weird. It's Hasbro. It's Hasbro. Yeah. Weird. So Galaxy like, Land. Yeah, not Fantasyland. There's like Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. There's Play-Doh. Sorry. Hasbro bought the rights to it. Yep. Yeah, check. Listen. Yep. You got zippers in your chins. So I assume you have a conky. I bloody well understand selling the name of everything brought to you by Montana's. You fuck. Uh, oh, you guys each owe me money because we didn't. 20. Because yeah, I owe you 20. I owe you 20 bucks. What yeah, a parlay. A what a night. Oh. We were so close to winning 13 large. The 13. Yeah, we were chasing parlay. the dragon on Two that goals away. Bet of how much? We decided to all chip in 20 bucks into one bet. It was McDavid to score twice. Nuge to score, Kane to score, Oilers to win by two, Oilers to score first, and the Hyman shot prop. Oh, you need a big night. Yeah, missed on the Hyman shot prop by one. McDavid got one, not two, missed a chance late. Nuge didn't score. Back Nuge had a boys. chance too. And Nuge had yeah. a chance. Nuge had a really good chance. Yeah, but we had everyone on the trip kind of like. Uh, it was a six legger. Everybody yeah. just kept. What do we need? What do we need? What do you, what do you guys need? need? I know it's so confusing. What do we still need? I, I, I That was such a. <laughs> Oilers won, and I missed all my bets. <laughs> Yeah, really? That is a weird. I didn't hit anything. Like you got way in. The I was chasing the juice. You, got did you have the Maberlin bet. I had the Maberlin. What shutout. were the odds on that Maberlin shutout? I had Maberlin <laughs> shutout. Will any Billy goalie record one. a shutout in the game? Yes, Maberlin. That would be a sick jersey to just get. Get the Berlin reverse retro. That'd be unbelievable in our office, and like get them to come in and sign it too. Yeah, it's just like this weird piece. Could of Could you imagine sister. if somebody actually bet that any goalie to get a shutout in the game? Well, it's not technically a shutout, so. Why getting one shot no goals isn't a shutout? You have to play the game. To get there's got to be a stipulation. You have yeah. to play. Yeah, at there's got to be one some... third of the game. That was mm-hmm. the other thing that would have broken the Oilers' way in that is like if Campbell hadn't given up any goals, they probably wouldn't have put in Berlin to ruin a shutout. Just saying. Yeah. Shout out to our friends at Betway. Nineteen plus. Please play responsibly. We did play responsibly when we were down in Jasper. We were just chasing the juice a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. I yeah. love a squad bet. I, that's it makes it entertaining. Like people are like, oh, you're throwing your money, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, no, like we had a great time doing that. What were the words those people were saying? I don't know. Yeah. But that was when, well worth my $20. When things were getting checked off the list and we were all fired up. That's the year, best. Windicate. Yeah. Windicate. Love a good Windicate. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've heard about our trip to Jasper, if you've heard us talking about Vegas, how much fun it is, you can join us in Toronto, March 10th to 12th, AMA travel, helping us put on another fantastic event. And this time it's getting bougie. And that's because AMA travel knows how to plan a trip. We're going to Toronto, watching Edmonton, Toronto, Saturday night from a gondola suite. Gondola. That'll be a lot of fun. A gondola is a lady who delivers your baby for you in a gondola. We're staying at the Royal York Hotel. Royal York. Which I mean, the queen stayed there. Gondola. Gondola. Transportation to and from. It's going to be a lot of fun. Nationgear.ca is where you go if you want to see more info on that. You don't want to miss out on. on, on Come join. We'll have a hell of a multi leg parlay going. Mm-hmm. If you're parlay. in your late stage pregnancy, yeah. we can hook it up. Mm-hmm. Sure. The gondola will deliver your child. <laughs> Tyler will jump in there. He's could the you deliver a baby in an emergency situation? Yes. I think you no. could. You could. You keep your wits about you. No, I'm grossed out by stuff like that. If we were in an the elevator with a lady, mm-hmm. all right. Would scare me too much. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Amber, Tyler's girlfriend, for, for being very. Patient, Hope you're not like in a situation Tyler. on the way to the hospital when you have your first kid with Tyler where you have to do anything. I wasn't even unhinged this weekend. I was like very low on the unhinged rankings of you remained on this hinged. Trip. I was, I kept Who was the, the wildest cat in the Wildcat crew? Sales guy, Jared. Not Jared, close. Jared, Jared and like, Ryan Pinder. <laughs> oh, Ryan oh, Pinder man. is. Pinder like, was, Ryan Pinder is an animal in a good way. He was boogieing. Like, he wants to have a party. Yeah. He was like on that last night, everyone went to bed around like whatever, one, one thirty, And he was still in the cabin. It was me and him. And I'm like, well, I'm not just going to like, see a dude. You can see you're by yourself. And everyone went to bed, kind of a natural ending point of that. He's like, well, one more beer. I'm like, sure. Why not, man? He goes, <laughs> he goes hard. I love him. Dances, he was a great time. Gets the music going. He loves like his deep house music. Deep yeah, house. Deep house. Yeah. Yep. There's a house party. There's a house house party. Same with uh, Adam Seaborn, sales guy, Adam Seaborn. When he was the DJ on Friday night. Excellent. It was big jams. He killed it. Big, big jams. He killed it. I yep. feel like he could make uh big shiny tunes three. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. I'm going to try join the show live from Florida on Thursday. Anything I should ask Connor, Leon or Stuart. Uh, How was Turks? That. Is that where they all went? Turks and Caicos? Yeah. I know McDavid and Dreisaitl did. G'd up. Kane, That's in a PJ. I think Kane's there as well. And they legit. You got the big cats on there? Yeah. They must have left like right after the game. Yes. 
First, I saw Run the off. photo of Celeste what a good and time. Lauren Kyle, and I was like, oh, my God. But then I saw that photo of Leon and Connor, and I was like, what? They look photo? so happy. Me, he's David Celeste. Mullet. He, so I, good. Oh, I love it. I so don't good. Know. You don't like it? I think if you're going to oh. do it, though, you need to do layout. Let's perm the top. Well, it's 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 in progress. This just kind of started to yeah, form. Yeah, he's like at the awkward stage of it where yeah, it's still growing. I'm yeah. I believe. I, 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 I like it right now, and I like where it's going to go. Sure. I like how happy those two look when they're together. Yeah, I do, too. So they're going there for boys. and they and and like honestly though their friendship is why they if, will play they, play as Oilers for the remainder of yeah, their career. It, yeah, but, and they just have to have success. That's how I like to see I them. Though. Success in Turks and Caicos, all star bound, tanned, rich. That's how I, I want to see them. They have, have so much time off. The moment you get the so monkey much. off their back, and like if we could just get one this year, I just feel like the floodgates open. See, up. Oh, buddy, I actually I see. I know this is a weird feeling though, and I actually kind of third favorited to win the cup right now. Yeah. I actually kind of go like when I see them do stuff like this, where they go on these trips together, I think regardless of the playoff success, they'll never leave because they'll always want to be together. Like yeah. think, man, you Leon spend- Dreisaitl knows, man, he's such a player of consequence because playing with Connor has a lot to do with it. And you spend so much time together throughout the season <clears throat> for you to get four days off where you could go do whatever you want to be like, no, we're going to go hang out together. Yeah. That says a lot about the kind of friendship you have. And I think that even when dry settles a free agent, it's like, Oh, you could go to New York. And it's like to what have a bunch of pressure on just me instead of kind of splitting the pressure with Connor. Cause that's another side of it here. And I'm just going to up and leave. No, I think they'll always have the, like, we need to do this together. Yeah. And they're like, who's going to pick up the bill? Who cares? We make 21 mil between us, not including endorsements. <laughs> By the time their next deals kick in, they might each be getting 21 mil per year. A Perfect. slice. Pay them. Why not? And we'll just put Matt Berlin in that for fictitious world. 200 million. Mm-hmm. Probably. We'll just have three E bugs and that'll get our salaries down. <laughs> yeah. well, three e- Paying everybody 500 bucks a game. Cause they're E bugs. <laughs> you can't just play E bugs. They'll say ATOs for everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine just every game you signed your entire roster to a one game contract. I was going to say play a lot more hardcore. Original Puzar is the guy who always corrects me whenever I say outlandish shit. That is in no way true, <laughs> but what's stopping a team from every game? Instead of dressing a backup goalie, ATO someone. ATO every game. In 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 in. Because how many times over the course of the year do you have to play that person? Ah. There's no, but like you're 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 a victim of circumstance. Matt Berlin isn't available every night. That'd be he is, uh, you know he's at the rink like every home game. He's the e bug like every game. No, he said in his interview that he. What about if the Golden Bears are in the giant playing the Huskies? And said you have to come to the arena. He went, "Oh shit!" Because you're yeah. backing up. So like he goes and he sits in a suit up in the press box. Right. But right. I'm, I've seen him there a bunch of times. I think he's the only guy they really use. Anyways, whatever. We're getting off topic. Getting a Matt Berlin jersey would be a gangster play in the office. We need it. Seriously so cool. though, let's talk about questions. Like, who are you going to get to talk to this weekend? What's yeah. the experience like for you to go to the all-star break? So on Thursday, there's a thing in the afternoon and I got to do it last year too, which is where I got the clips with Leon and Connor where every player just gets 15 minutes at a podium and you can just go to their station and stand there and ask them whatever you want. Can you get Leon to shout out Kennedy? Maybe. Ask Leon if he's a hot bitch. Tell yeah, Leon Kennedy's close. eight and it's his, it's her birthday and it's her birthday wish to get a shout out from Leon at the all-star game. Happy eighth birthday, Kennedy. He'll say. Yeah. Are you going to ask Beth- almost everybody a question that you get to? Uh, well, like there's certain players like Connor McDavid's scrum is wild. Yeah. Last year, Leon Drysaddle's scrum was quiet. Like for half of it, it was just me and him standing there. Happy eighth birthday, Kennedy. Uh, but there's always like random players and coaches. And what I liked doing last year was finding the random players and coaches who don't really have anyone there and sliding in. Because then you kind of get like a bit of a one-on-one. Could you ask Gary Bettman if he's going to abolish the Flames? Oh, I did ask him that last year at the All-Star. The what? Oh, yeah. The Flames. Mm. I asked him about the Flames Arena deal, and I was like, shake. That's at so least nervous. five years out, four or five years were you, out. Were you nervous talking to the commish? I was a little, like, the heart was going a little bit, and I was like, don't stutter. But don't. you weren't nervous to talk to Connor? No. Like, well, Batman, because it was on, like, TV, right? Like, they were right. streaming the press conference, and I was like, don't have a voice crack. Don't have a voice crack. Kept like, <clears throat> hi, Mr. Oh, hey. Batman. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> you my Tyler, but, your M truck from NHL.junior.tv. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna talk to him about. I'm also going to a thing that's just McDavid and CCM. They're doing like a function for McDavid at some spot. That sounds robotic. And they send me the itinerary, and it was like five to six questions with Connor McDavid, six to nine open bar. 
No. And I was like, what do you, what is McDavid question mark? What event is this? <laughs> How is it a four hour event where one? And I was like, I'm in though. Meet and greet. Yeah. Heck yeah. Sure. Why don't you ask Connor McDavid? About the flex point on his stick. Uh, so I actually do have like a couple of ideas I'm like drumming up right now. Like I want to talk to Skinner about like the security of signing a contract and things like that. And and if it like kind of takes any sort of pressure off of just him. Just get him off the record a little bit and be like, did you want to skip this because you just had a baby? I was thinking about that though. He does get like, he doesn't need to be there till Thursday morning. It's an honor to be at the all-star game. So like, you know, he does yeah. actually get like four or five what? days here. To, like, <laughs> the all-star game sucks. I think time. he'll be one and done. Well, maybe. Well, maybe. It's cool for him. Yeah, it's cool it's for very, him. very cool for him. Yeah. He'll like, be around for at least 10 years and all-star <laughs> games only four days. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. It's just a brand new baby. First one. Yeah. I want to ask the one question too. I think I'll ask them is like over the last month or so, Fighting is sparked up on the team. You guys scrapped now. I was going to say, are you guys feeling like the room coming together more than maybe it was early in the totally. season? That's a good one. They yeah. had more fights in January than they did the entire first handful of months yeah. before. That. I think about those questions and I'm like, there's just a very easy, like he's not going to want to say no, no, you know what? It's just as, just as divided as it's always been. Right. Like it's not, it's kind of like the answers when Gene asks him, you can kind of. Thomas wants to know who drilled the holes. Get to the yep. bottom of it, Tyler. No, I, I really, honestly, I'm sitting here trying to come up with questions and I realize how hard that job I is. I might talk a little bit. <laughs> there's not a lot of easy questions because a lot of them are just like, yeah, are the t- is the team coming together? How- the hardest question would be like, when do you have to win by before you pull the plug on this fucking city? Yeah, I'm not going to ask him that. And exactly right. But that's when you're drinking thing. water on the bench, do you close your eyes or leave them open? That'd be my question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how many sticks do you go through a year? How many pairs of skates? Do you I'll regret ask, your life? I'll ask him that one at the CCM one. Yeah. Cause I mean like gear, I know I would, I can't break in new skates. Like I have two pairs of new skates. Yeah. cannot break them in. Frank can either. Yeah. Ask, ask Connor if his favorite skates are the uh, XCM thirties or the new XCM 31s and where his stick flex ranks on his interests. I want to ask him what's the first hockey stick you remember getting. Like as a kid, I think somebody actually has to say a CCM. I know, something, but like, something. which one was it? What was like the first stick you loved that you remember? It's got to be if it's not so the speak. Gretzky Silver Easton. That's the greatest stick of all one. time. Hey, oh, I had the gold Brett Hall, and I love that. So speaking of sticks, so it started making me think about more of the sticks that we used to use because there was. I saw a gold Synergy. Remember the first Synergies? Yeah, I had the silver. There was one. a guy using one of the Easton Synergies, and there was a guy, like I said, using the Sherwood Coffee Fifty Thirty. And I thought about like what my first stick that I remember was. It was a Louisville Messier, and had an absolute banana curve on it and then i started thinking about like literally like you just said gold eastons silver eastons no that how, gretzky was a beautiful how stick cool yeah like silver easton was silver unbelievable easton. um but yeah like so i mcdavid shit like what's what, what what sticks back in the day did he like my first stick now that you're talking about it, like i don't remember exactly what it was i just remember how heavy it was basically yeah. a club oh yeah then there's it's amazing how light some of the new like really expensive sticks are well let's talk about the price of sticks here oh, that's ridiculous my most memorable stick is a coho vector when i got that i was it was the most aspirational stick then i got one and i loved it until i broke it yeah uh, why not ask them what the first time they remember is kids doing something freakishly good in hockey was like what's the first time you remember leon being like oh snap i just had 11 goals in house league oh yeah it's actually a the first time they remember being awesome yeah i wonder what kind of answer they'd give me on that well, because we've asked players before, like, what was your kind of thought? Like, when you knew, like, I'm yeah. probably going to go to the show. Connor might not be as interesting, but Leon. No, Connor's like, I walked out of the womb. Yeah. I was He's shooting, like, well, ripping I, top I had cheddar. a meeting with Commissioner Bettman when I was six. <laughs> I was actually an active part of the 0405 lockout negotiations. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, but Leon's a bit probably more interesting because yeah, it can't have been assured for him no. as a German guy growing up to be an impact NHL player. Yeah. There has to have been. Something that happened that made him go forth. Where did he, he came over early for junior, right? Yeah, he played in yep. PA when he was like 16 on. Yeah. That's a smart move. Well done, Leon. Mm-hmm. Talking about the sticks. What was yeah. your question? I was going to ask her a question. Yeah, I talked about your coho vector. Yeah, but I said my, my favorite stick, but then you had a question. Well, mine was just like about, well, like you were talking about price of sticks these oh, days. Oh, yeah. How much they, how much they weigh. I don't no like joke. to be old man that yells at cloud too often, but as I get older, I start yelling at clouds. Price of sticks, doesn't matter if it's good or bad, is insanity right a now. A new high-end stick is now $400. So $400? 450 The same price as a driver? 450 Drivers so, are seven. Seven or eight. 
the the stick, a brand new like ping well, driver, driver is like seven run, run for years. five years. Yeah. The like, stick I, don't even I brought take to Jasper shots anymore, and I break comps and sticks like crazy. The stick I brought to Jasper was one of the cheapest Sherwoods I could find, and it was still one hundred and fifty bucks. Okay. Where, where? Because like I, I literally went to a local sporting goods store, and the cheapest stick I could find was two ninety nine. Uh, Canadian Tire, Yikes. I think. So what I'm starting to do now, because again, playing beer league, obviously I cannot. If you're in beer league using a four hundred fifty dollars stick, I don't even know what to tell you. Oh, I'd cry. Uh, yeah. So I think the way I do it now, one, there are shops where they fix broken ones. That is a very good hack for anyone looking to get like high end. Bust out the old wood clubs, I think. And or second, just get pro stock ones. I just got a hack. I just thought of it in my head. So you go and buy yourself a nice, you know, $280 CCM rib core or some sort. And then you buy that stick every 28 days and then return it. So you always have an active receipt. I think they probably limit to how many times you can return it, but yes. I have a life hack for you, Chalmers. You will always have a warranty. Because, like, honestly, I, my, my nephew just broke a $220 stick. Maybe even more. 240 I think it was. Your logic makes no sense. Many like American states, Chalmers. 31 days after his 30-day warranty. Ugh. Many American it's states, just, it's not a felony to shoplift under $900 anymore. In yes. fact, in many cities, <laughs> they won't even enforce it. So I would just say pick a really democratic city like Portland or Seattle. Yeah. Go to their local sporting goods store. Make as many trips as you can. No, you know what? I realized why it wouldn't work when I was saying it because it would be attached to that bill that it would be a return and because they would have your email and it would be like online receipts, it would always be ticketed to that. Yeah. Yeah. Or just do it like up the back of the shirt, like when Coombsy snuck the shovel back into the saddle. So I don't know if you know this, but Tyler Remchuk's going to a CCM Connor McDavid event. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask Tyler to steal about 20 sticks from that because I'm sure everyone gets a McDavid stick. Mm -hmm. So you take like 20. I'll keep 15. You can have five. What? And then we're taken care of. Well, yeah. 75, 25. But I'm the one doing rip. all the work. Management. Mm-hmm. I guess you approved the trip. So but <laughs> you, well, then I'll give away some of the sticks. Yeah. But I, just, I don't trust you too. And then low. you have to bring them back. So, I mean, you got to like tape them all yep. together, put them in the plastic. Get as many Locked. left-handed. Yeah. Right-handed. Maybe a couple right-handed. For, well, I don't follow you anymore. Mix it up. Yeah, that's true. Well, actually, no, I do now. Okay. Jay a couple right-handed for, uh, for BM. Jay doesn't appreciate right. my content anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I stopped following you on Twitter. I'm waiting yeah. for the I'm waiting for the premium paywall Twitter content. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sign uh, up for my OnlyFans. Well, we didn't come up with very many good questions for them. Yeah, we got a couple. I'm oh, I trust what, okay. A, any non-oiler, you have a specific question that you would like to ask them. Anybody that you zeroed in on, you have. You a know, specific- did you know this is only Sidney Crosby's been in the league 18 years. This is only going to be his fifth All Star game. Oh, really? that's great! He just oh, ducks he, out or he, he dips everyone. Ducks out. Is but it, he, he, he this year he's like, oh, it's in Florida. All right, is, is Ovi? <laughs> yeah, th- this is going to be one of the few times they're both there. I love. Ovi always ducks out too. They always you did. Can, you can enjoy your sports charmers. For me, nothing has the drama of an NHL All Star week mm. weekend skating. Shooting the mascots, the pageantry. I, we were talking about this on the way home yesterday in the Nation Bronco. What? What? Do you have any ideas how you could improve the All Star Game? Because, like for me, I'm not going to cover it. We'll do some stuff on OilersNation.com, but ultimately, it's incredibly boring. The loser has to execute. Here's here's teammates. just a quick question and that, comment. Now I'm in. For me, the All Star Game. I don't give a shit what it's like. It's of time, like the skills competition. Sometimes the worse it is, the better it is. They'll never try harder than the skills competition in in Vegas when they were doing the things in like the Bellagio fountain and shooting. Like I was like, this is super cheesy, but I'm more watching just how these dudes interact. They're like, um, whether or not they're comfortable in front of the camera or like the media, like I don't give a shit how they perform. And then maybe some guy will do something cool, but like the actual game, if it's not back and forth, fast paced, I'm more interested in just watching them on the bench, talking to each other. I just want they the need to inside bring back story. The puck, and that's the same thing with like the NFL All-Star game, like All-Star weekend in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Everyone who's always like, oh, the game is so shit. It's like, the fucking game? What are we doing here? I want to see how Tyreek Hill and, and uh, like Jamar Chase and these guys interact on in between their events, have them mic'd up. Have That's an, what I want to have see. an NHL.com feed where you can just at any point rotate through whose microphone you're listening to. Be unbelievable. That would be great. And they would all have and to be careful, cool shot. which means they would all not be themselves. But every so often there would be two guys who just as themselves are Perfect. Like, you know what I mean? They're not always swearing, not telling stupid stories, but just like they would be so engaging or like a guy like Gronkowski, you know, that 
you've got to have a filter on him, but you know that you would get gold. Just put him on delay. Have. Or he'll just be like Tyler when he didn't remember he was mic'd up the other day and he was shit talking you. Oh. Yeah, the first like five minutes. The first five minutes of our game is being like fucking Chalmers. Fucking Chalmers isn't even listening to the game plan he put out. What no, is Chalmers? I doing? was not. I was all <laughs> over the place. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I, I was the one. I was just trying to wheel and, and I couldn't stick handle. God damn! Fr- Frank didn't hit his over right. I think he scored like four. four no, four maybe. No, he is he good? Five. He's good. He moves. Stay home, steady D man. Stay home, steady D man. He's yep. exactly what we needed him to be. Okay, we're gonna wrap this bad boy up. Yes. Uh, good work, everybody, on today's episode of the pod. We'll be back Thursday when I'm going to be in sunny Florida and you'll all be sitting here. We'll chat then.